Can't believe I'm about to tear up. I thought I could handle this video, but just work with me. Hi, Donnie's. Welcome back to my channel. Um, so, well, this story is going to be kind of morbid, but I need you to bear with me. As you know from my bio, my stories are sad, funny, and ridiculous, or all three emotions all at the same time. So just bear with me. Now, this story is regarding my grandma. As you know, my grandmother um, was a stroke victim, and for 10 years of her life, um, she was bedridden. She was paralyzed on her right side, and her speech didn't work very well. But that didn't stop her from being feisty. As you know from my previous videos, my grandma was really feisty. So even though grandma was really feisty, um, she wouldn't do her speech therapy nor her leg exercise. Well, no, she did her leg ex exercises, but she wouldn't do her speech therapy. She would always say baby, as if, as in if, babyish. And we were like, Grandma, but we don't understand you. You need to do the speech therapy. And she would go, shh. And we're like, hey, we understand that. Now, there are times I think my grandma was messing with me. When I would go to her room after cleaning her up, she would point to something on the dresser that she wanted off the dresser. And so I would pick up one item and she was like, no, 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 no. And so then I'll pick up all these other items and she kept, she kept saying no. She kept saying no. Then I pick up the original item that I first picked up and she said yes. And I'm like, you messing with me. I know you messing with me. So I really think she was messing with me because I know grandma was in her right mind even though she didn't do her speech therapy because she could sing better than she can talk. I mean, she was a singer so it just came natural. But there were times she would sing happy birthday and we would realize, oh, it's somebody's birthday today. So we'd have to go find an old calendar to find out whose birthday it was. So, like I said, grandma was in her right mind and she was still feisty, even though she was on a sick bed. I already told you about her whooping me from her sick bed and I already told you about her pulling out her police badge at people. So even though grandma was in her sick bed, it did not stop her from being feisty. Speaking of grandma's speech, <laughs> there were times bill collectors were called and we would tell the bill collector she's a stroke victim and you know how some bill collectors are really uh, nasty and they didn't believe us, right? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to put her on the phone. So I would give grandma the phone and she would get on the phone and she sounded normal at first. She would go, hi, baby. How are you? And then next thing you know, just a whole bunch of gibberish. <laughs> and it was funny to my mom and I, because, you know, we kept telling her she's a stroke victim. She doesn't speak well, but they didn't believe us. So we gave her the phone and there you have it. Now I'm rolling my eyes because my favorite part was when like her old friends would come over to visit. And like I said, she didn't do her speech therapy. So we didn't understand what she was saying. But her friends or other family members who weren't there on a daily basis will come in and visit. And then they'll come out the room and be like, what is she saying? We don't have a translator for this. I mean, yes, yeah, she's speaking in tongues, but we're not uh, <laughs> prophets where we can interpret what her tongue is saying. We don't know what she's saying. I wish you knew what she was saying. My little cousin, when she was three, she knew what she was saying. But then when my cousin got older, she couldn't translate anymore. So we just had to do our best to try to understand what grandma was saying to us. But that really chapped my hide when people will always ask, what is she saying? I don't know. So like I said, my mom and I took care of her like for the 10 years of her life. I think her stroke happened in 93 and... Um, yeah, and then 2003, she ascended on to heaven. But before that, she was under hospice, hospice care. And um, she had been under hospice care for like a year or two. And I had totally forgot that she was in hospice care because, you know, that's for people who are tr transitioning. And I remember telling the hospice care nurse, you guys know I can't talk. So just bear with me. Just work with me. So I was telling the hospice care nurse, I was like, well, she's eating this junk food. And the nurse was like, well, she's dying. Let her eat it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It did not register that she was dying. So I was, you know, I'm still trying to give her healthy food and she wants to eat junk food. And I was like, oh, I guess, you know, if she's getting ready to transcend, 
So we'll give her some junk food. Okay, so let me get to the morbid part. So somehow grandma communicated that she wanted all the family there um, before she gave up the ghost. So I got all the family to come around. Um, my grandmother had three children and each of those children had one child. So the grandkids and the children were there and um, the ex-son-in-law uh, was there because he was still a friend of the family. Um, so everybody gave their respects and I was the last one to, I can't believe I'm about to tear up. I thought I could handle this video, but just work with me. So I was the last one to leave the room and grandma held my hand. Now, I've never seen anybody actually die in real life. I mean, yeah, you see it in the movies, but in real life it's different. So she's holding my hand and I gave her a kiss on her forehead, but she's holding my hand, right? And she's like really ready to give up the ghost. But all I can think was, um, is my hand going to be stuck when she died? <laughs> I know that's rude. Y'all forgive me, but that's what I was thinking. How old was I then? Nah, I think I was in my early 30s. Uh, but that was the thought I had that, you know, my hand's going to be stuck when she died. And I was scared to hold her hand. And um, But my hand didn't get stuck. And yes, I found out brick and mortis doesn't set in until two to three hours later. But I didn't know that at the time. So you guys tell me in the comments section, have you ever experienced death, uh, what do you call it, literally in your face? And how did you handle it? All right, Donnies, remember to toast to life because it always makes for a great story. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and please hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next week. Bye.